Tokyo, my friends. This is Daisuke, and I hope all of you are doing well. It's now Saturday, February 16th, 2019, and it's morning here in Tokyo, where I am. And I woke up this morning to the wonderful news about Criterion's planned release schedule for the month of May 2019. And so I thought I'd take this opportunity, if you don't mind, just to go over with you the announcement from the Criterion Collection and just share with you some thoughts I might have with respect to these. And also, in the meantime, if you have any thoughts or comments or reactions of your own, please feel free to let me know in the comments section below. And I'd love to hear from you about these, uh, these very uh, fascinating titles that are planned to be released by the Criterion Collection in May 2019. Okay, so the first, the first title that we can talk about is scheduled to be released May 7th, 2019 for spy number 974. This is from 1949 from the United States. Director is William Wyler, and this is the film The Heiress. So here is the, oops, excuse me, here is the cover uh, design that appears on the Criterion uh, Collection website. I apologize sincerely for the poor quality of this video. I hope you can forgive me. Um, this is uh, uh, just a, a larger uh, laptop tablet that I'm using today. So I apologize for the poor quality. Please take a look at Criterion's website yourself just uh, to get a better impression as to what this cover looks like. But this cover design uh, is very alluring. It is a depiction of the actor uh, Olivia de Havilland, who is uh, on the front cover here. And it says, William Wyler's The Heiress. And so this is a, uh, this is a, a fascinating film. It, for those of you who haven't seen it, I think you're in for a real treat. It is a I think quite deep and emotionally resonant film and uh, for those of you who know Henry James and Washington Square I think you'll really get a kick out of this film as well and also uh, it's a a film that is a, a kind of a costume drama but so uh, it, it is so relevant I think it is so relatable in terms of it being about feelings and human emotions and love and betrayal and all those things. It is really very hot uh, in terms of its emotional meter, so to speak. So this is a very welcome addition to the Criterion Collection. So, uh, And it might be a good uh, entry point for those of you who are interested in exploring the works of William Wyler. So this is very ex exciting news indeed. So. As I say, this is scheduled for spine number 974. A very quick rundown of the special features for the heiress uh, will show that it's a new restored 4K digital transfer. Then there is a new conversation between screenwriter Jay Cox and film critic Farron Smith Nemi. And uh, then there is a new program about the film's costumes featuring costume collector and historian Larry McQueen. This is great because the costumes, as you may know, were designed by the one and only Edith Head. So they are absolutely stunning. And oh gosh, the next feature is in fact a short film, a restored 1950 short film called The Costume Designer featuring costume designer Edith Head. My goodness, this should be very interesting indeed. Next is an appearance by actor Olivia de Havilland on a 1979 episode of The Paul Ryan Show. Next is excerpts from a 1973 tribute to director William Wyler on The Merv Griffin Show, featuring Wyler, de Havilland, and actors Betty Davis and Walter Pidgeon. Next is Wyler's acceptance speech from the American Film Institute's 1976 Salute to William Wyler. Next is interview with actor Ralph Richardson, filmed in 1981 for the documentary directed by William Wyler. 
plus trailer and an essay. So this is very welcome news indeed. And the more I look at it, the more I realize that this this is a gosh. Look at this. It's 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 stitch work artwork depiction of the uh, Olivia de Havilland character. So uh, this is quite a, a thematic uh, significant point. So uh, again, the heiress, this artwork is quite stunning actually. So uh, yes, for May 2019, very excited about this. Mm. Next, scheduled for release in North America, May 14th, 2019. This is a film from Austria, 1997 scheduled for spine number 975 and it is a film called funny games from the director whose name is Mikhail Hanukkah this is 1997 uh, funny games and this is the Austrian version and let's just take a look at this film this look at this cover uh, for those of you who have seen the film you might know what is being depicted on the cover, but I don't want to say anything more for those of you who haven't seen the film. Uh, you have the very prominent, bold, red font uh, for the title Funny Games, which is also uh, something that's consistent with the film for those of you who've seen it. So this is, I think, on the one hand, uh, it's, it's a seemingly plain looking image, but uh, again, it's one that is, I think, particularly significant uh, and therefore it is highly suggestive of what the film is about. So uh, I love this sort of cover because it's, it's simple and to the point, and yet it is something that is very representative of what this film is. And for those of you who haven't seen it, uh, this is a very... Uh, stinging, uh, provocative work that is uh, that is shocking and very unnerving in more ways than one, I should say. So uh, this is a sort of stuff that really is the uh, sort of the lifeblood, if you will, of of uh, the Criterion Collection and why the Criterion Collection is so great because it includes these kinds of, I think, I think very thought-provoking films. So, And Funny Games is certainly a very thought-provoking uh, thought film, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Very quickly, going over the, the director-approved special edition features, we have a new 2K digital restoration supervised by director with 5.1 surround DTS HD Master Audio soundtrack on the Blu-ray. Then we have new interviews with Hanukkah and actor Arno Frisch, then new interview with film historian Alexander Horwath. Press conference from the 1997 Cannes Film Festival featuring Hanukkah and actors Suzanne Lothar and Ulrich uh, Mure. Trailer and a new English subtitle translation plus an essay. And again, this is scheduled for release as spy number 975. So it looks like... I should make a point right here that this is the 1997 uh, version. As some of you may know, there was also a film from 2007 called Funny Games. And this, that was an English language version of this particular story. So I know that there were uh, rumblings and rumors or uh, uh, some people in on the internet who were maybe guessing that if this film were released by the Criterion Collection then it might be as a kind of double bill with the two, the uh, the English language version as well and uh, as far as I can tell there is no English language version here it's only the 1997 Austrian version and I think on the one hand it's interesting that it's the English language version is not included but on the other hand, I think that's really interesting because it, I think, allows for a focus on the film, the 1997 version itself. And I think a discussion of the 1997 version versus the English version, which I think is from 2007, 
I think a discussion of the, the, the similarities and differences and the comparisons between those two works, I think that's a very fascinating discussion, but I think that's a, a related but separate discussion, if you know what I mean. Uh, and so therefore, I, I like the fact that it, this film is enjoying its own release as it is, and so therefore the, the conversation or the focus can be on the merits of the film itself. And of course, I think a discussion of the, uh, you, uh, the English language version on the merits of that film itself is also very relevant. And then from there, you have a separate but relevant discussion of the interrelationship between this film and that film as its own separate discussion. So I like how these discussions can be had, of course, uh, in their own way and, and in their own time. But here we have a release that I think is very respectful of the 1997 film. And therefore, I would, I'm looking forward to the conversation about this film once this uh, Blu-ray uh, or DVD is released and uh, hearing the reactions, especially from those who have uh, yet to see this very thought-provoking film. So I'm, I'm glad the focus will be on the, the 1997 film itself and, uh, and, and hopefully uh, many interesting conversations will grow from that. I, I look forward to hearing your comments uh, for those of you in particular who have not yet seen this film. Next, this is also scheduled to be released on May 14th, 2019 in, um, in North America. And this is the film that is already in the collection. This is spine number 399 from the United States, 1987. Director is David Mamet. And the film is this one, House of Games. Now, I should give a little plug here for our dear friend, Solitary Ronin, who has his own YouTube channel, Solitary Ronin, and he does a lot of great work. He does a lot of very interesting top 10 videos on uh, a lot of the films that I really like. One of the things he does very well that I admire Solitary Ronin uh, so much for is he does work on uh, filmmakers that I think uh, deserve more attention and these are certainly filmmakers that I I admire but I I admit that I haven't given them any attention that they deserve and so I really regret that so in that respect I really appreciate and admire Solitary Ronin's work he does a lot of work for uh, regarding films um, by John Sayles for instance and also uh, David Mamet and so Solitaire Ronan, I think, will be especially pleased with this announcement for the May 2019 titles. House of Games is a mind-blowingly <laughs> fantastic film. So uh, it's very, uh, well, I don't want to say anything, uh, but it is, uh, it is, oh, gosh, uh, fantastic, intense, um, uh, I think if you haven't seen it, you're truly in for a, a, a real uh, surprise. Uh, yes, uh, so House of Games. So this is a, uh, oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I don't want to say anything more about it. But um, So this is the Blu-ray. And for those of you who may know, this was already released. Uh, this is currently in the collection as this DVD. And so we already have the uh, DVD here and if you can see the DVD and the Blu-ray release they seem to have the same cover art which is fine although I would note that uh, the DVD at least as far as I can see on my own copy there's smoke but the smoke seems to be a little bit more pronounced and there's a little bit more uh, blue uh, tint in the cover art for the Blu-ray at least it, as it appears on the Criterion website versus the actual DVD cover art which is a little bit more uh, subdued, a little bit faded, perhaps. Uh, so this has a little bit of a, um, a bluish tint. What's the word for? There's a special word for blue. I forget. But um, yes. So there is that. And so I think. But the cover art in general is quite. Uh, it, it's consistent with the uh, DVD release currently. And I should say also that the supplemental material also appears to be. <clears throat> the same. Uh, we have the high definition digital transfer supervised by director of photography uh, Juan Ruiz uh, Anchia and so that is the same 
uh, as what it appears here. So I'm assuming it's going to be the same transfer. I can't tell yet without looking at it, but it's. I think it will be the same transfer because this DVD also has what's called new restored high definition digital transfer supervised by the director of photography. So it's the same description for the transfer. So it's probably going to be the same digital transfer, although I have to actually check it out when it comes in May to be absolutely sure. Then the uh, there's the audio commentary from 2007 featuring director Mamet and consultant and actor Ricky Jay, and that also appears on the DVD. Then there are 2007 interviews with the actors, which also appears on the DVD. Then there is a short documentary, uh, David Mamet on House of Games, which is also here. Then there is a detail from a storyboard of a short con not used in the film. And I'm assuming it's the storyboard detail which is included on the DVD as well. Trailer plus an essay by critic Kent Jones and excerpts from Mamet's introduction to the published screenplay. So here we also have an essay by Mr. Jones and excerpts from uh, the introduction to the published screenplay. So it looks like the special features are also being carried over to this new Blu-ray or this new release uh, from Criterion. So uh, this is going to be, uh, it looks like a, uh, there's nothing that's going to be added, it looks like, although uh, we have to check it out to be absolutely sure. But in any event, uh, this will be a Blu-ray uh, come May 2019. And so I am looking forward to this very much. And uh, again, House of Games, very exciting. Next is the title, which is scheduled to be released in North America in May, or May 21st, 2019, uh, Spine Number 976. And this is Claire Denis, Let the Sunshine In, from 2017, Juliette Binoche. Now, I have, oh, here we go. There is the cover art for Let the Sunshine In. So this is, uh, yes, this is a film that I have not seen. And so I wanted to see this for the longest time, but I was not able to, to get my hands on it yet. And I was actually thinking the other day, you know, I really should get this. So uh, this, the timing of this announcement is, is quite quite nice, very opportune for me. So I'm looking forward to this one very much. Uh, and I've heard so many great things about it. When was this? This was 2017. Yes, yeah, so 2017. So uh, as some of you may know, I'm very bad with my uh, recent release watches. So uh, this one uh, was a film that I was not able to catch. Uh, and so I'm very uh, excited to get this uh, announcement from Criterion. Wow. Two luminaries of French cinema, Claire Denis and Juliette Binoche, unite for the first time in this piercing look at the elusive nature of true love and the extent to which we are willing to betray ourselves in its pursuit. Okay, that sounds interesting to me. So, uh, But I, again, I've heard so many wonderful things about this film. Um, and so I can't wait. This is going to be great. Uh, the... Director approved special edition features, 4K digital master, uh, approved by a cinematographer, uh, Agnes uh, Godard, and with 5.1 surround DTS HD master audio soundtrack on the Blu-ray. Next, new interviews with director Claire Denis and actor Juliette Binoche. Next, a short film directed by Denis called Voila l'enchaînement from 2014 and seen this either so next is a trailer and next is a new English subtitle translation and then an essay this is the one for me that I haven't seen and so I'm looking forward to this one very much uh, as I said I heard many things about it upon its initial release and once more I know a lot of people who are very uh, who are uh, who have seen the film and who actually have uh, copies of this film and I know many people who have told me that they really enjoyed this so I'm looking forward to this uh, incidentally I've just found out that I think our friend Luke at Razor Wire Reviews has just put up a, a video 
about uh, this particular film. It's not the Criterion release, of course, because that's still forthcoming. But uh, it's his. It's a, a different label's release of this film. So uh, I encourage you to check that out when uh, when you get a chance. I will certainly check it out as soon as I finished. Uh, making this video, so uh, check out Razor Wire Reviews, and I think he has a very uh, interesting uh, power of perception. You know, he seems to be able to read the future, and that's really wonderful. So good, good job, Luke. Uh, I really commend you on that. Excellent timing. Uh, anyway, let the sunshine in. Next is scheduled to be released May twenty eighth, twenty nineteen. And this is scheduled for spine number 978. And this is the film from 1977 uh, from the filmmaker whose name is Agnes Barda. And this is the film called, um, uh, what is it? Uh, L'une chante, uh, l'autre pas, I think. That's the French title. So this is the title which is one sings the other doesn't and excuse me for the glare here but there is the, the cover art this is just a, a this is a, a, a truly um, surprising and wonderful announcement from Criterion I, I don't know if you've seen this film but uh, this film is uh, a, a, oh I'm so happy that this is going to be released you know I have the I think it's Artificial Eye DVD of this uh, from the UK, uh, somewhere here. And so um, this is a a tr uh, a really uh, <laughs> it's a really how shall I put it? Um, it is a film that is filled with so many uh, uh, surprises, and uh, it it's. Uh, I think very inventive uh, in ways that are not overly showy, if you know what I mean. And so I'm so, so thrilled. You know, this is one that I think really deserves a lot more attention. And it is quite a, um, um, it's, it's kind of surprising in many ways. And so, uh, and it, it's quite impactful. So, Gosh, yes, one sings, the other doesn't. This is going to be one of those that, oh, I cannot wait to get this Blu-ray and watch this one again. Um, Varda is one of those filmmakers, you know, that I was actually considering uh, going over her work. You know, I'm doing some uh, videos on certain filmmakers. At the moment, I'm working on Edward Yang and uh, Kazuo Hara. But Vardo is actually, I admit, was one of the filmmakers that I was thinking of because she has such a um, a, a very uh, powerful filmography, and uh, this film, one things the other doesn't, is a uh, uh, yeah. This is this is one that I can't wait to hear your reactions to uh, when you see this because uh, I, I can't wait to talk to you about this one. So uh, anyway. Uh, uh, the director approved special edition features <laughs> is uh, is as follows. So here's the new 2K digital restoration, um, supervised by uh, director Varda and cinematographer Charlie Van Dam, and with uncompressed monaural soundtrack for the Blu-ray. Next is a 1977 documentary uh, making of. Uh, let's see. It's uh, women are naturally creative. Great. Next is a short film by Varda from 1975 uh, on the question, What is a woman? And the title is Réponse de Femme. And then next is a 1976 short film by Varda uh, called Plaisir d'amour en Iran. Then there's a trailer. Then there's a new English subtitle translation. And then an essay. So, ah, oh, my goodness. My goodness. So, um, this is, I think, uh, this is the one that uh, uh, gets to me 
uh, gets to me the most uh, so far. Uh, so far, the, the films that are being released so far by Criterion are, are all stellar, don't get me wrong, but I think this is the one that gets me the most. So um, please, please, when this comes out, please, I urge you to get this one. Uh, one Sings, The Other Doesn't. So oh, I'm sorry, maybe I forgot to say, but just in case. So One Sings, The Other Doesn't is scheduled to be released for spine number 978 on May 28th, 2019. And then, also on that same date, there's going to be a uh, release for Spine number 977. And this is the film from 1986 from the United States. And this is by a director whose name is David Lynch. The film is called Blue Velvet. So... As you can see, here is the cover for the planned release of Blue Velvet. Looks very uh, innocent. It's blue. Um, and so, there you go. And you've got a very intriguing font style. Uh, it says David Lynch's Blue Velvet, nothing more. So, looks very nice. So, the director approved special edition features are. The new 4K digital restoration with 5.1 surround DTS HD master audio soundtrack on the Blu-ray, uh, both supervised by director David Lynch. Next, we have alternate original stereo soundtrack. So Next, we have a feature-length meditation on the making of the film called Blue Velvet Revisited. Next, we have the lost footage, 51 minutes of deleted scenes and alternate takes assembled by Lynch. Next, we have Mysteries of Love, a 70-minute documentary from 2002 on the making of the film, trailer, and more! Exclamation point. Yes. So, this is a very interesting list. Now, I know that the Blu-ray, uh, the MGM release Blu-ray from... Uh, from a few years back now, I think, has the Mysteries of Love documentary, uh, but there are also other supplements on that disc that don't appear to be included here. But again, I'm not sure because Criterion says here more, M-O-R-E, exclamation point, I don't know. Uh, so I should point out that I think the Blu-ray had the Siskel and Ebert review um, also, the Blu-ray had the the was it the four vignettes, and then there was also um, there was also the uh, lost footage on that as well. And so, I don't know if the this what's called the lost footage, fifty-one minutes of deleted scenes and alternate takes assembled by Lynch. I'm not sure if this is going to be any different than that which appeared on the MGM release, but who knows. Uh, I haven't seen Blue Velvet Revisited, this feature-length uh, meditation. Uh, so I'm not sure if this is a feature that was uh, appeared elsewhere. I don't think it was. But in any event, I don't recall ever seeing this one. So I look forward to seeing this. And then a trailer and more. So I think I would be very... How shall I put it? Um... So I think I'm most interested about the lost footage here. I'm not sure if this is going to be the same as that which appeared on the MGM Blu-ray or not. Um, if it's going to be different, then this is cause for celebration. Although, again, I'm not sure. Um, and I think that the lost footage supplement on the MGM release... I think that was also around 50 minutes. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, but if that's the case, then Criterion's description here, it says 51 minutes of deleted scenes and alternate takes. This could probably be the the same footage, but again, there is it's called the lost footage, so uh, assembled by Lynch. So I'm not sure if this is the exact assembly order or if this is a, maybe a, the, the same source material, but just... Uh, arranged differently, I'm not sure. But in any event, I am, let's say, let me just say I'm cautiously optimistic at this stage uh, with respect to the lost footage. Although, again, it's going to be very good to see this. Uh, and then more. 
uh, exclamation points. So I'm very curious as to what this more means. Uh, perhaps this means something that was similar to that which was made available on the MGM uh, Blu-ray, although I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, yes, so there you go. So again, there are some uh, question marks that I have in my mind still about this uh, Criterion release of Blue Velvet, but I think those are not so major in my opinion. I think in the long run they're relatively minor. So yes, so I should talk about the film itself. You know, um, Blue Velvet is a film that I saw many, many times. There was a period in my life when I was very young, maybe around maybe high school or maybe my first year in college, where I would see this film so much. Maybe I, I saw this film uh, during that period in my life. I saw this film more times than I think was probably good for me. But I really uh, love this film so much. And I think the issue of whether or not the supplements are actually uh, new and, and substantively new, I think, is still up in the air. Uh, but let's put that aside because I think that's, um, again, what I say, I think that's a relatively minor point when we compare it to the fact that this is going to be included in the Criterion Collection, which I think is very significant for a number of reasons. First, this was a, in, in some ways, we can consider this to be uh, a kind of return of this film to the Criterion Collection. And what I mean by that is, I understand that way back in the day, uh, around, the, I wanna say the mid 80s, or uh, I'm sorry, the, the late 80s, uh, early 90s, around that period of time, I forget the exact date, but this actually I understood was planned at some stage anyway, to be released as a Criterion Laserdisc. Uh, so Laserdiscs, as you know, were the uh, Criterion releases starting in the um, mid to late 80s and going on through uh, the, most of the 90s. And then they stopped once the format died. But uh, this was planned to be released as a Criterion Laserdisc, but those plans fell through eventually. And so it was never released uh, in the Criterion collection as a Laserdisc. So, uh, but the plans were there, I understand. So it's nice to see this release finally come because it's almost like Criterion is fulfilling its plans that it started, uh, you know, way back in the day. So that's probably a, maybe around 25 years ago. Uh, so, you know, and so I really like this uh, release because it's another example of I'll see you again in 25 years. Meanwhile, so this is really great. Uh, uh, and it's also great for another reason because this is Blue Velvet. Uh, by David Lynch, and it's probably one of his, if not his most iconic uh, cinematic work. And perhaps this means that there might be more David Lynch films to come in the Criterion Collection. So, so far we have, of course, Eraserhead and those supplements on Eraserhead, uh, the short films. And then we have uh, Mulholland Drive. And so, and then now we have, uh, and then we have Far, uh, Twin Peaks Fire Walk With Me. And also we have now Blue Velvet. So what does that mean in the future? Uh, Lost Highway, Inland Empire, a straight story. Uh, my goodness. Um, this might be an interesting uh, time to be a Criterion Collection fan, especially if you're a fan of David Lynch. And I think finally the significance of this is Blue Velvet itself. Um, the film is a... It, it's undeniably one of the great masterworks of 20th century American cinema. It's an intense work, it's very violent, it's, it's quite unpleasant in places. But if you can stand that, then, and if you haven't seen the film, then uh, this is the, the best time to, to watch this film. Uh, and uh, it is going to be, I think, one of the great releases from Criterion. And so I'm very happy for this. This is like, what, what's the way, what's a good way of putting it? This is like, um, you know, um, uh, this is Criterion's way of, of, uh, of, of uh, sending its love, right? I mean, this video is, is February 16th, 2019. So it's a couple days after uh, Valentine's Day. But this is probably Criterion's uh, love letter. So, uh, you know, love letter straight to my heart. So, 
So in conclusion, what can I say about my reaction to May? Um, I'm very, uh, I'm very happy because we have two films from France. We have a film from Austria, and we have a kind of Blu-ray upgrade of a David Mamet film. And I think you know, more attention given to this film, I think the more exciting the uh, landscape of the film uh, fan community will be. And then we have the two American films that I think couldn't be more different from each other. Uh, William Wyler's The Heiress and also uh, David Lynch's Blue Velvet. So this is a, a stellar lineup. I am, oh gosh, I mean I say this all the time with respect to Criterion announcements, but this is why I love Criterion so much because it just gives us so much uh, so much uh, riches here. I think for me in particular, I think I'm excited for the Claire Denis film because that's the one I haven't seen. And also I'm most excited perhaps for One Sings the Other Dozen, although also I can't contain my excitement enough uh, with respect to Blue Velvet. I think this is going to be a wonderful month in May. Uh, with that in mind, my friends, uh, please let me know what you think of the May 2019 releases. Are you excited for them? Are you not? Are you disappointed? Somewhere in between. Which title are you most excited for? Uh, please let me know and I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments. And so, yes, so thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a really nice rest of your day wherever you are. Please be happy and healthy and well and please 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 keep on watching a lot of great films i always look forward to hearing your explorations and adventures in all things movies films and cinema and life okay my friends take care and see you soon cheers mm -hmm.